Hello, Mr. President. Hi. Nice, nice to see you, sir. You remember my wife, Sam? Hello, Barry. Nice to see you again. May I present my daughter, Bambi? Hello, Barry. My son, Brent. Nice to see you. This is my daughter, Mama. Hello, Barry. This is my husband, Bob. Hi, Mr. President. Hello, 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 Mr. President. Well, I think we'll do this, and I think there's some cool photographers that are going to go in. And some new photographers. Hello, John. All right. Let's wait for that. Yes. Let's wait for those photographers. All right. That's a very good advice. And as soon as we get set here, we're going to bring them in. Do you want to have the family in? Tom? No, no, this will be fine. All right. Yes, I was going to say. It changes your opinion of the Marine Corps when you have your family. You had to change your opinion of the Marine Corps? A little bit. All right, sir. Please place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, William Cross, I, William J. Crown, Jr., do solemnly swear. To solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duty. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, President. And why don't we bring a family of people so they can really a bad and appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you all very much. And Jack Hume and the president of our Citizens for America, Lou Lerman, I want to thank both of them for all that they have done and have been doing, but all of you, the members of CFA, the founding members, the Jefferson Circle, 
Without you, our many accomplishments would never have been possible. Inflation has been 2.5% for the last four months. Uh, I don't know whether other anyone has ever explained to you that the total potential labor force is considered to be all men and women in the United States between the ages of 16 and 65. And today, the highest percentage of that force that is employed is the highest that it has ever been in our nation's history. And you might be interested to know I got some of the latest figures yesterday also on our volunteer military. 91% highest high school graduates in the military now, the highest percentage of high school graduates the military has ever had, even in the days of the draft. Uh, and, uh, yesterday I was over at the ceremony for the goodbye of the day before yesterday of Jack Vesey, our Joint Chiefs of Staff General, who's leaving, and it was a most impressive military ceremony. And I looked at those young fellows standing there in uniform, and as they marched by, and I thought, why didn't we keep Shevardnadze here for that ceremony? <laughs> Four years ago, there were only $39 million in venture capital available in the United States. As of last year, there was $4 billion of venture capital available. <laughs> and now I know that you've made your top priorities this year, tax reform and SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative. And we're most grateful for, for that and on both of them, but I'm just going to tell you something that I've been suggesting around our shop. Uh, Senator Kennedy's line about calling it Star Wars, picked up immediately by all of the press, isn't very descriptive of what we're talking about. We're talking about a non-nuclear defense that kills weapons, not people. Right. Right. And, uh, So we've just been talking about maybe starting to use in our discussions of this, you might find it that you'd enjoy it yourself, that what we're talking about and what we're researching is a strategic space shield. Hey. Well, you please keep it up with all that you're doing in support. Now, I haven't mentioned one other thing that I think is the top priority in everybody's mind, the deficit. Well, good Lord, I was talking about it 30 years ago out on the mashed potato circuit. <laughs> We've been running a deficit for more than 50 years now. And it just turned out, here in our shop, we've been talking about, instead of just each year greeting the budget and trying to whittle it down and eventually get to a, a, a balanced budget, why not a long-term program that is aimed on a declining deficit because there's no way you could eliminate this deficit in one year anymore and have a government left. Down here and at the end of that period where you've reached the balanced budget by implementing this plan, you then have a constitutional amendment requiring from then on a balanced budget. Okay. Well, this morning, the Congressional Republican leadership, the House and the Senate, were over. And in the last few days, we've discovered that without our ever saying anything at all about what we're talking about down here outside the shop while we talk about it, there are two Republican senators, Senators Graham and Rudman, up on the Hill. And they must have been extrasensory perception, maybe both directions, but they are talking about a plan very similar and we are now going to be talking together about all this on such a matter. But, uh, incidentally, uh, speaking about uh, these defenses and this shield and all, one of our, well, the man who's in charge now, uh, our UN delegation, uh, General Vernon Walters, former general, he has been in China 
and he found that there they were a little unfriendly toward our uh, strategic plan of defense. And um, one of them said to him, we have a question we ask here in China. He said, if a man perfects a spear that can pierce anything and then meets a man who has perfected a shield that can resist anything, what happens? And General Walters said, I don't know the answer to that. But he said, I do know that if a man who has perfected a spear that can pierce anything meets a man who doesn't have a shield, I know what happens. <laughs> Well, I've talked long enough for too long, and I'm going to go down the hall here to the Blue Room, because then I know I'm going to have an opportunity to greet each one of you and say hello individually. And, and so I'll go down there now.